So I just watched this footage on Facebook of a black guy walking along the beach and he's talking about how the Americans and the Russians are fighting proxy wars as they did during the Cold War in Sudan. Um, he mentions that during the Cold War, uh, thousands and thousands of people were killed, innocent people were killed over in Africa. And they all, what they do is they play two sides off against each other. So say, for instance, if a government over in Africa is going to be leaning more towards, uh, say, for instance... Russia, then what happens is the Americans come in and fund the opposition to him, whoever that might be. Um, you could call it paramilitary, uh, warlords, whatever. And this went on for, well, the entire length and period of the Cold War. Now, the Cold War stopped for a while, and I was amazed at that because it's a great moneymaker for the powers that be. Um, watch who gets lobbied in government. Watch who they're lobbied by, and watch what these people are to do with. So are they private banking that funds both sides and makes money out of it? As indeed, say, for instance, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers and whoever else you want to mention always did. And they fully admit this. Um, but whether it's also people who make arms, the weapons to supply to these people who are going to fight in these countries, because people are worried about a nuclear war. This is not going to happen, right? Don't worry. But what we need to do, uh, when I say we, that is they, the powers that be, what we need to do is scare the living pants off the people out there and tell them that nuclear war is just around the corner and we've never been closer to 12 o'clock than we've ever been before kind of thing um the last time i think that we actually or the americans and should i say the russians went as close as they were going to go to war would have been in the cuban missile crisis where i think they went to defcon 2 um that's uh, as close to readiness as you get before you actually go to war um but the great thing about history is it gives you a map for the future because if nothing else, these people are uh, predictable. They repeat themselves over and over again. Why are we having a Cold War again? Why? Because it's great for business. It's that simple, right? Imagine the powers that be are lunatics and psychopaths. Well, you wouldn't have to imagine, but you get the idea. Okay, and these people are greedy beyond any belief. They're never satisfied with the amount they've got. They need more. They need more and more and more. And it's a game of brinksmanship. It's a game of chess, if you want, except maybe, maybe with nuclear weapons and people's lives. Now, there is no person on either side that's ever going to push the button. Because even in their psychopathic sense, they love themselves so much. And this is the important part to take on board here. They love themselves so much that they would never do harm to themselves. And let's be honest, if you poison the atmosphere and you ruin the earth, there is nothing left for them, okay? If you diminish uh, the amount of people on Earth to next to nothing, then these people's stature, as it stands, is diminished as well. Don't forget, these people need you to know just how rich, how famous, and how powerful they are. How can they be powerful if there's nobody to be powerful over and they're the only people left? Don't forget, they'd have to do their own work then. It's not going to happen. But what they will always do is tell you that we're very close. And in so doing, what we need to now do is spend millions of pounds of your taxpayers' money on the defense of our nations. So uh, they used to spend the taxpayer's dollar over in America like it was going out of fashion. Um, the Americans used to make sure that there was uh, nuclear proliferation. And they wanted to keep parity with the Russians. Um, the truth of it actually was that they thought that they were behind, but the Russians were sticking out models of uh, uh, and make-believe uh, rocket silos and stuff like this. They were doing all sorts of stuff to make the Americans believe they were up to speed, but they weren't. And then actually the Russians got ahead and the Americans got behind and then the Americans got ahead and the Russians got behind. And then all the time they're having these talks and they're all talking about how they're going to get rid of weapons. But the truth of it was most of the time what they were going to do is talk about getting rid of obsolete weapons that were no use. Okay, this made you believe that things were happening and there was hope. But what was actually happening is they were offering all the stuff that was out of date and they were planning for the future. Because I don't know if you've ever walked around, say, for instance, take Great Britain. You will see now a lot of uh, places that were uh, Cold War bases. Take, for instance, Western Supermare on the outskirts. There was Banwell. That place opened in uh, around the Second World War, I believe, roughly. And then it went to be a radar training operations base that basically people would go there learn how to work the radar and then go 
on from there. Um, it was closed down, I believe, in the late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. And there was another place. But as radar becomes less needed, they went more to the online method where we didn't have to use bombers uh, to deliver our missiles. We could then have, uh, uh, what they call them, is it ICBMs, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles? Yeah, I had to make sure I got that right. So during the 60s and the 70s, we were working on missiles and the radars had to know when they were coming. But now we've got satellites up there, so it's a lot less. These places have all been closed down and incidentally been sold for housing. Now, it also makes me think to myself, the people that pay for these places, that would probably be us. And then who actually got to sell them and make money out of it? Because I'm pretty sure you didn't get anything out of that, or nor did your grandparents or anything else. It's just a thought. Now, um, if you remember the Cold War during uh, Khrushchev and Kennedy, that was, as I say, probably the closest we ever got. And that was two people rattling the saber at each other. And there were many people on that weekend uh, of the, the, I think it was, was it over a period of about 12 days or 14 days or whatever it was? But many people didn't get a lot of sleep and many people thought that they went stocking up and they thought that was going to be the end of it. I think people finished work on Friday and not sure they were actually going to be alive for Monday to go back to work. I suppose some people, if you're in an awful job, it wouldn't be as bad as people looking forward to going back to work. But I'm joking. Anyway, the truth of it was neither side actually wanted to annihilate each other. Now, now we move on to the mistakes. Mistakes were made, believe it or not. Uh, we can talk about 1984, where we uh, nearly, or the Americans, nearly launched everything they had at the Russians. Sorry. Nope, wrong there. Reverse that. 1984, all of us lot were having our uh, maneuvers. We told the Russians, but it was the height of fear, and um, because they were really paranoid with the Russians. Not that we weren't. We just pretended we weren't, even where we were. I'll give you some idea. What they would do is they would send people to spy uh, from Russia to Great Britain, say, for instance, and they would ask, are the blood banks being stored? Are extra movements of food being made? Are they getting extra medication in? Are the lights on later at night in the halls of power? Well, yes, they were, but that would be the cleaners that were in there, actually. So, And all of this had to be sent back. And they had the spies over there, and, and the spies said well, there wasn't actually anything, but if you didn't report on anything, you'd be frowned upon, so you had to make some up. Well, this didn't help very much anyway. I'll move on. The amount of money that was spent during the Cold War with the Americans was trillions. With us, it was billions. You have to ask, who made the money out of that? Who were the people supplying the weapons? Who were the people who um, were telling our government or advising our government that we need to do this, we need to do that? How much were they getting paid? Okay. The, the, basically, this is a huge, huge money maker for the, for the evil people, for the bad people, right? And... When the Cold War died, or finished, as we thought, that was a loss of money. But don't forget, they moved then into Iraq, and they moved into Libya, and they went and played around with Syria for a while, and they basically went and antagonized another part of the country and made shed loads of cash out of that. Oh, well, and then also, we then had that uh, two years of COVID shite, and that made people who were millionaires billionaires and people who were billionaires more, all right? Um, but at the moment, people are getting a bit wise to that. So let's just go down the old road of the Cold War. Now, both sides are equally guilty of this, okay? Um, however, what we usually do is we go onto other people's so soil and fight the war there. Destroy their country, obviously, in the aid of democracy. Because here's the thing. Our, our country is apparently democratic, believe it or not. And apparently you have freedom of all the things that apparently they don't over in Russia. And if you believe that, you're mad because we, uh, actually knows it. we, we have um, a lot of uh, freedom to do, uh, um, oh yeah, I can go out, okay? I can talk to people about certain things, but not about other things. I can go to work as long as I pay my tax. Um, I can drive my car as long as I pay huge amounts of tax. I could buy food, which is inflated and modified, um, and I'll pay tax on that. I can uh, put electric... Oh, that reminds me, I've got to put electric on here, actually. Uh, and I'll pay a huge amount of money on that. More, lots, lots, lots more than it actually needs to be. 
Um, it's all about extorting every last penny out of the little people that they can, keeping us poor, but giving us a reason to be scared. Imagine this, that if you didn't do what the government told you, there wouldn't be much recourse. Say, for instance, you stopped paying your tax and they didn't send you to prison. Well, you wouldn't pay your tax, would you? Say, for instance, <clears throat> there was no Cold War. Say, for instance, there were no viruses to be scared of. Um, and say, for instance, the police were just and the legal system was correct. Then you would probably, um, because you'd be allowed to protest, et cetera, et cetera, you would probably see through, oh, no, that's the other thing. And if we had an honest media that reported on everything that was good and bad equally, all right, then you would see what was going on. And very quickly, you would take aim at these people and they know it. So what they do is they keep you skinned, blind, scared, uh, and they give you somebody to hate. Clever, isn't it? Oh, and the whole time they keep you mentally <clears throat> worried about all sorts of things from, am I going to pay my bills? Um, am I going to get done for this because I was only telling the truth, but apparently that's illegal. Am I going to be able to drive a car in five years? Am I going to be owning my own property in six years, seven years, eight years, because, you know, the way things are going and they're going to make it so difficult for you to keep up with the, um, <clears throat> the arrangements that you'll need to have in place for your house, say, for instance, the insulation, the double glazing, and all the other rubbish, right? Because that's going on as well. Right. All of these things are to relieve you of cash, right? And to keep uh, the country uh, as close to broke or broke. And I think, actually, we're all broke, actually, in theory. But who do we all owe money to? And that's the thing that's never talked about. I think I've talked about it a few times here, but every country around the world is in huge amounts of debt. But if we were in debt to each other, all of us, right, just a thought, we could just all make this agreement, shake hands and say, right, let's write a debt off to each other, all of us, right, and we'll start fresh. I know that's hypothetical. But if they were kind and decent and honest people out there, that's pretty much what you do. You start a scratch, right? But we don't owe that country debt. That's the key thing. We own private banking. Who are these private bankers? Well, look into it. You'll find it fascinating. Um, but that's the truth. So at the moment, this is the latest thing. But this thing can be milked for, well, Christ, what was the last one? Cold War? Started at the end of the Second World War when uh, Churchill came out and said, <laughs> what did he say exactly? Uh, An iron curtain has descended from Trias in the Adriatic to where it is in the world. I can't remember, and I've got that wrong. But anyway, he, he, he went into this speech, and everybody adopted that word, the Cold War, and that was it. And that went on until, I believe, the Berlin Wall came down in 89, and it was shortly after that that the USSR, as we knew it, started to crumble and failed. Um, and that was a while after that that we started having people from these Eastern European countries land in Great Britain and all over Europe because there was some sort of uh, thing saying that they couldn't come here back along, but we changed all that. And then these people that had known only ever poverty and didn't have a great deal came over here. And uh, many of them came, made as much money as they could, sent it back, went back, and then having themselves a nice house and stuff back there. Do I blame them? Nope. Many of them have decided they're going to stay and have stayed and have made their lives here, Polish people, Romanian people, whatever. Um, and there it is. But the whole point of this is that people who are afraid that they're going to push the button is never, ever going to happen. But they will let you believe that it's going to happen and that you need to make yourself safe. I mean, let's be honest. Do you remember when they used to say that, 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 that duck and cover? That was laughable. Um if you look in the uh, 80s, they had these manuals of what to do during a nuclear uh, war and a fallout and all the rest of it. The truth of it is, if they'd launched in Bristol, people and me here at West Soup may be dead, right, and all the rest of it. But as I say, with the amount of nuclear weapons that both sides have, if they all launched, they would destroy the planet. And they know it. So it would never happen. One side would always back down, or both sides. And... Imagine this, just a thought. Because we know that all of this is bread and circus on our side, and it's also bread and circus on that side, 
would it be too far-fetched to imagine that both of these enemies actually talk and that both of these enemies are actually making huge sums of cash out of their people through things like this? Would that be too much of a stretch? And if it is, and that is the thing, would it be a possibility that maybe they'll keep up the fear-mongering amongst themselves and the propaganda and everything else whilst playing brinksmanship, knowing that they'll never ever launch, but they'll always make billions at a little Joe Public while we're all so busy, also worrying about what could happen. <coughs> we're not looking at the other things they're doing to us. It's just a thought. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to get on and I've got a day off today and I can't actually get anything done because it's pissing down out there. So I can't work on the vehicles and I can't buy any parts for them because the places are shut and I ain't watching TV because it's going to be full of sausage fingers. So I'm pretty much stuck in. So I'll be watching a film. Uh, whether I do a live stream tonight, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, catch you in a bit.